Good afternoon, good morning, good day. Um, what I wanted to share with you guys today was a simple trick that I've kind of figured out uh, messing around with some uh, PLA Plus, printing some deck boxes for a friend of mine. Um, I've printed basically some with a design in it and some with solid tops. Um, as everybody who's done anything with, the, with PLA or PLA Plus or some of the other filaments out there, you get a phenomenon called stringing. And stringing happens whenever the tip leaves a surface and moves to another surface. And there's things that you can do in the software to, to mitigate some of the stringing problems. But no matter what you do, you seem to still wind up with the stringing. Now, it's real evident on the inside of some of my boxes. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over and show you those views now. I just wanted to kind of show you an overview real quick of what uh, five boxes, that, well, if I did ten boxes total, and five with the design, five without the design, and then we'll go through and uh, we're going to pull out the red ones off the end down here and go through and explain a few things to you that I've discovered and maybe some tricks that will help you guys out. Okay, as you see before you is the red boxes that uh, that I've already done. And the, the box here, the top and the bottom, I've already went through and, and did this process to us. So, okay, this, this works out pretty well. Um, I have struggled with stringing since day one. You know, how do you get the strings off? You know, everybody says, well, get a heat gun. Well, I got a heat gun. Um, the problem is, if you just hit it with a heat gun straight off the, the table, you can actually uh, damage. These are real thin walls. Uh, just They're extremely strong. The PLA Plus is what this happens to be. It's a little bit better than PLA, in my opinion, for strength. Um, and adhesion, it seems to work better. Um, the problem is, when you just hit it with a heat gun, you just get all these little nodules. And by the time you shrink up all these these different strings, um, you can actually deform these boxes. Um, so what I figured out is if you take this over to a sink and you get a, a rough scrubby, you can actually use hot water and a scrubby to knock off the majority of these strings a lot easier than trying to pick them off. Now you can always sit here for hours and just pick, 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 and you know, it just drives you nuts. Um, so that's basically the trick we're going to discuss is how you clean these strings off as fast and easily as possible so you can move on to other projects. One side note, I've already gone through and used the uh, deburring tool uh, to deburr the edges of all my boxes and get all the sharp edges off. These, these boxes are all going to go to a young lady as a Christmas present. Um, and I don't want her hurt in any way. And so I went ahead and alleviated all the sharp edges on the boxes, which you tend to get regardless of what's going on. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step and see what we get. Okay, so here we are at the sink and just some quick uh, numbers for everybody. Uh, again, I printed these are in PLA Plus. So I, they printed off at 200 and I think it was 230 degrees Celsius with about my table temperature was 7 degrees Celsius. My hot water that I'm going to be using to do this process is at 47.6 degrees Celsius. So there should be no way that hot water will deform the product in any way. All it's going to do is just loosen up those fibers. And then the real uh, work is going to be done by this guy here. Uh, we'll use him to get some scrubbing action on the boxes. And uh, we'll see what happens. A little bit of detail on this box lid so I don't want to mess it up too bad. The other reason I'm actually using the hot water is I used glue, a glue stick to kind of help the adhesion to the to the uh, build plate because I didn't want to run a brim um, or a raft or rather around my, my, my product. I didn't want to have to deal with that so I used a little bit of uh, glue stick to kind of help the adhesion go a little bit better and uh, we'll see what we get. I'm going to go ahead and turn the water off because I know that's a little aggravating. And uh, that way we're not listening to water run. There you go. I'm sitting there scrubbing it off screen. That probably doesn't help at all. Let's see what we got there. So that's the top should be good, but look how bad that bottom box is. A lot of stringing going on inside this. So, uh, Let's see what we can do with that.
I found running different directions just kind of helps it out. Go left, go right, go forward, go backwards. Just all you're really trying to do is just break the connection between those fibers and the actual product that you're dealing with. Now again, you could have opted to use sandpaper and then paint the box, or paint whatever your product is. But the problem is, this did not need to be painted. I actually went through and printed each individual box in the corresponding color of the, um, the actual mana symbol that's on the box. So the red mana symbol, if you're not familiar, is that. And so we printed it in red in the red PLA or PLA plus. Okay. Now is this going to get every string off? No. But what this does do is it gets the majority of them so that when you do hit it with the heat gun, you don't have to have as much time on the product with the gun. Um, and you're not you're trying to, to keep them to form in the product as best you, as you can. Because like I said, it doesn't take much. Once you're at that critical temperature, it flat deforms quickly. So we'll go over there and dry them off and see what we got. Okay, so here we are. We're all dried off. Just used a simple dish towel. Dried them off the best I could. And uh, had a looking at the box. And we got, mm, I'd say we got a good half to three quarters of the strings out of, out of this box. And this one here cleaned up pretty well. Uh, my next step that I try to do is I use one of these cheap little scrubbies that you get from Walmart. Um, come in a two-pack or whatever. And uh, it's never been wet. So I'm just kind of using the Brillo pad. And I don't want to get too aggressive. Because I, I do not want to paint these boxes in any way. So I'm just trying to break those fibers off and get the remainder of the ones, the longer fibers as best I can. So we'll just do this a couple of different times in different areas, move around, and just get the, the bigger stuff out of the way is all we're trying to do. I don't want to mark up the, the box in any way because, like, again, we're not going to be painting these, and I don't have a... I don't think the only option I'm going to have is if I mess it up is to reprint it. So... And let's say we get this, the majority of them off and there'll be a few stragglers left around, but it's not that critical because we're going to hit it with the heat gun. But again, the heat gun, we just do not want to be on the, on the product no longer than we have to be uh, to get to get it good, good and clean. Now, you're going to see inside this man assemble here, you've got the small strings here and there um, and they're right on the tips. So I, this is where I've got to be real careful with the heat gun. So let's see what we can do with that. Oh, Ryobi or Ryobi, whatever you want to call it, heat gun. Uh, just whatever works for you works for you, right? Um, so just basically get it turned on, get it running. And also, again, all we're after is just the small little strings in there without hitting it. See how they just dry right up. And we're not having to stay on the product long because we don't have many to hit. And that cleaned them all up right there. So that's all, all finished. It's all good. See how pretty that is? Now, you will notice... And some of you guys that are that have been in doing this a lot longer than I have, or whatever, you'll notice the, the, the different designs in the top. And that become that comes from the build plate that I'm actually using. I do not run a glass plate. I will be running one in the future. But right now I'm just running the, the plate that came with my uh, 3D printer. And the 3D printer I'm running is the which one is this? It's the Ender. Uh, so with that being said, everybody's printer does a little bit better job, a little bit worse job, whatever. And it depends on how you got them dialed in, but Again, we're just trying to fix it and get them and get it to where it's, it's the best we can possibly do. So, again, we got a few strings in here. We we'll just hit that, and when they curl up on you like that, if, if there's too many of them, you'll have to get in with your hands and get after them. But uh, that's what we're trying to alleviate is having to do that. This portion here and getting a bunch of stuff knotting up because these two, these boxes have to fit together. And if I if I if I'm on the product too long, then the fit. And the locking mechanism does not work correctly. But if I do it all right, it'll be nice and clean. And there you go. That's what you're going to wind up with. And I only got nine more to do. And then we can box these up and get them in the mail. And they'll be ready for her on Christmas morning. Whenever uh, my friend gets a chance to uh, get them opened up and wrapped up and done it for her. I hope, hope this helps everybody out a little bit. This is just a little thing I learned. If you guys know of anything that works better than this process, throw it in the comments. Let me know because I'm always looking for different ways to figure things out and make things a lot easier for me. Um, again, simple tools I used was, was just a uh, one of the cheaper or more economical um, uh, D 
deburring tool. I think I got this one on Amazon. If I can figure out the link, I'll throw it up there. Um, but other than that, you can get them. I actually, I found like a four or five pack of Milwaukee ones from uh, Home Depot one day, and I got them scattered all over my shop from different areas. Uh, the only reason I don't like the Milwaukee is the handle's a lot smaller, and um, I prefer a larger handle. In fact, I wouldn't mind having a little bit bigger handle than this, but, but this is the one I got, and this does work well for me. The neat thing about this particular one, it comes with about seven or eight different tips, five, five to eight different tips. Uh, and they're pretty, pretty easy to change them out. You just pull that back, it comes out, get you, put the new tip in, and it locks in place. Yeah. It does it off camera just great. Hmm? So anyway, um, there's a little product plug for somebody. And uh, hopefully, again, this helps you guys out. And we'll catch you next time. Have a good day.